With the new Notion forms, Notion isn't just good at organizing and sharing information anymore, but with collecting that information as well. And with this information, you can filter, sort, analyze, and take action on it all in one place, as well as visually show the results with Notion charts. The only thing Notion can't do yet is conditional logic, though this is coming soon. You can use Notion forms to collect user feedback, create a help desk for your team to raise a ticket, send surveys to your audience or RSVPs to events, or even to track and log your daily habits. All right, so how do you create and use a new Notion form? At the bottom of a blank page, you can click on form, which will create a full page Notion form, just like a full page database, or you can create an inline form by pressing forward slash and then just typing in form and then selecting the form option. And because this is an inline form, you can still add other blocks to this page. Now for the form, you can add a name, you can add a description, you can give it an icon and you can also give your form a cover. And when you create a new form, you'll have two default questions, but if you want to delete them, you just click on the three dots and click on delete question. Now I wouldn't recommend you to delete this first question because this is the title question. This is the name of your database entry. But if you do delete it and click on the plus, then you'll see your title question here under existing properties and you can always just reselect this. All right, so before we go through all the different question types, let's just first cover all the question settings. All right, so the first thing is you can obviously rename your question and this one I'm just gonna do first name and you can highlight this again and also do all the normal text editing like make it bold, italic, underline it, strike through, make it code. You can add a link, so you can link it to a, another page or a form and you can also change the color. I'm just gonna remove the strike through, but this actually looks kind of cool, so I'm just gonna leave it like this. All right, now let's go through all the question settings. The first option is to make it required, meaning they have to fill in this question in order to submit the form. You can add a description so you can describe your question, and because this is a text question, this is a text property, you can also toggle on this option, which is to make the answer longer. But for the first name question, I'm just gonna toggle this off. Next, you can change the question type, so you can turn it into a different question, into a different property, and you can also view the linked property. So this is the property on your database. So in this case, this is the title property, the name of the database entry. And here you can change the icon as well as rename it. And this option, this last option, which is sync with property name, this will change the name in your database. So if you change the question name, it will also reflect on the database property. So to just show you what I mean, here, if I click on view link property, you'll see that the name matches the question. If I uncheck this and then remove this part of the name and go back and view the linked property, then you'll see that it didn't change. So you sort of wanna keep this on unless your question is extremely long and then you can just add a single word for your property and don't have to have a whole sentence as a property name. And to just show you this in the database, so here we got our title question, and if I go to the second view, which is all of our responses, then you'll see that the name of the database entry is first name, and then we also got two extra properties. So this one is the person that submitted the form, and then this one is the time that they submitted the form. All right, now let's go back to the form and go through all the different question types. All right, so the first question type is a text question, aka a text property, and this one is different from this one, which is the title question type, the name of the database entry. So don't confuse these. This is just a normal text property. So if I go to the database, then you'll see here it is a text property. But with both of these, you can toggle on the long answer option. And with this one, you can also duplicate the question. And I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this and move on to the next question type. The next question type is a multiple choice question where it is essentially a multi-select property. And here you can add options. So I can click on add option and then add the different options. I can also reorder them and I can also delete some of these options. And at the moment it is a checkbox, meaning I can select as multiple tags as I want. But if I only want to select one of them, then I can go to the options and I can change max selection to one. And now, as you can see, it is now a circle and you can now only choose one of these options. And if I go to the database and here, you'll see that we got our multi-select property and here is the different options. All right, so the next question type is the date property. So for the date question type, you'll see that we got the same options as a normal date property, which is to include an end date as well as a time. The next question type is a person property, which is only for internal use. So if you make your form public and you share it with other people, then you're not gonna be able to use this property. This is only for people that's in your workspace 
which will then allow them to tag other people and also select themselves. And here we got the same options as the multi-select property. So we can choose multiple people or we can just select one of them. So this question type would be useful for internal teams if you want to select another team member. Next, we got files and media. So here you're able to upload files and media. So this would be a files and media property. We have a number question. So this is a number property where you're only able to add numbers inside of this question. We got the checkbox question type, which is only a yes or no value. So it's different from multiple choice where there's tags like the multi-select property. This one would be a checkbox property. So it's either yes or no. And then we also have an email question type a URL question type, as well as a phone number question type. And if I go to our database, then you'll see that we got all of the properties added to our database. Now, let's say you want to notify yourself or a team member when someone fills out the form. What you can do is you can go to automations and then for the trigger, you can select page added. And then for the action, you can send a Gmail to yourself or someone else, or you can even edit the property. And then let's say the person property and then select a person and then it will tag that person. And you can also send a Slack notifications and also turn on this option, which is send notifications to either a specific person or the person that is tagged in the person property. And then that will show in your notion notifications. And if you click on the three dots, then here you'll be able to customize your form. So you can obviously change the name, the icon, add questions, automations. And then also if you click on customize form, then here you'll be able to change the submit button. So you can change the color. So let me just change it to green. And then here, instead of submit, let me do send and then just add in some text, which will show once you've submitted the form and I can now click on preview, which will preview my form. And I'm just going to add in something here because this is a required question. And as you can see here at the bottom, it now says send. And if I click this, it submits the form and we got our confirmation text. And the person who submitted the form can also view the response. So this will open up as a database entry and then they can see all the answers that they've inputted. And if I go to responses, then you'll see that I got my new response here. And if I want to share this form, then I can just click on share form and then share this link. And at the moment it's for people in my workspace. So we'll be able to use the person property tag people and it will also show their name. But if I change this and we make this link public, so anyone on the web with the link, then here you'll see a pop up that says we can't use the person property anymore. And then if we just select got it, now we can share this link with other people and they'll be able to fill out this form. And we also have this option to turn the notion branding on or off. Now you might have noticed we also have this option anonymous responses. So if it is public, then it will be anonymous. But if it's for people in my workspace, then I can toggle this on or off. So this is essentially the person tag. But obviously, if you're sharing it with other people, then we can't use the person property. So then it would naturally be anonymous. And then let's say your link is public, but you don't want to get responses anymore. You can just change it to no access and then it will be closed. So nobody can submit the form. And also another thing that's important, if you share this link, then it will only show the form. But if you share your Notion page link, so here, if I go to publish and then publish this and then share this link, then it will show not just the form, but the other information that's inside of this page as well, as well as the form. So you can share your whole page with the form inside so people can still fill out the form. Or if you only want them to see the form and only fill out the form, then you want to click share form here and then share this link. So you can build a whole dashboard which has everything that you need as well as the form. And then you just share the form link because you don't want people to also see the other information. Or you can create a page like this one where it shows everything so all the information that they need as well as the form. And then here, you don't just want to share the form because they need the other information as well. So you want to share this entire Notion page. And yeah, that's pretty much everything you need to know to start using Notion forms. Be sure to give this video a like if you found it useful and check out this next video if you want to learn how to build a Notion forms habit tracker.